I didn't have a sense of direction. I didn't really know like who I was. I didn't have any self-worth still. And I always felt like I still somewhat had to hide it, but was like battling these two sides of myself. It's like everything else faded around me. And I had this crazy vision of Jesus standing in front of me and he was holding this unlit lantern. And he was like, I want to welcome everybody back to another episode of The Soul Inspired. Today, I have Ella Dawn with us. She works with spirit, and she's also had an encounter with Jesus. So we're going to we're gonna dig into that. We're going to talk about some other things in the ghost and spirit realm of things. But first of all, thanks, Ella, for being on with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. And, Here, Jeff. Uh, yeah, and like we said before we started, it's 7 a.m. for you, so you're up bright and early and having this conversation with me. So I appreciate you taking that time. So definitely, I usually start all my episodes. Anyone that has gotten used to the way that I direct things on here, it's really to, to dig in a little bit deep before, before the changes in your life. So if you look at who you are, who mm -hmm. Eladon is today, the person you are, the things you do, the work you do, if there was a defining moment, spiritual experience, anything that happened in your life, if you know where that moment happened and you think before that, who were you? Who was Eladon before the changes? Or was this something that you came out right from the womb and you're like, you know, <laughs> here I am? Or is there a defining moment? I just wonder who you were growing up and where, where it all started. Yeah, I would say it's kind of hard to put a defining moment on it because I was born always having very spiritual experiences. I was born into a church, but despite the church having this very logical process to how we approach God, I was always very spiritual and I would always, I'd often see spirits, I could hear spirits, my teddy bears would talk to me. So as a kid, I always knew I was very different, but I think there's been several defining moments that kind of approached how I viewed what was happening to me and how this actually applied to this world that we live in. Okay. So you had, so you always felt spiritual as a kid, as did I, you always felt yeah. a little bit more connected to something beyond what I call the meat suit, what we're yeah. doing, like the day to day. Okay. But as you got into your, you know, teenage years and moving into adulthood, you had some defining moments. What was, if you were to really think about, and, and again, I know when we, when I first connected with you, you had mentioned you've gone through quite a bit. You mm -hmm. had, you had the positive and the negative, uh, right? There is positive and negative in the spirit world. And I don't mind touching on some of that. I do like to keep everything positive. Of course. I think most people that watch my podcast know that and they see that by now, but even if it was something that just kind of made you question things a little bit, what was the first mm -hmm. Thing that you experienced in your life and how old were you i think when i was about 15 i ended up uh social media wasn't what we had today so i dove into a lot of different books and there was this one meditation book that i had and i had read through this meditation and i like actually sat down with one of my girlfriends and we're like let's try out this meditation um and it was kind of where you picture you're like floating on your back you're looking up at the clouds and you need to like turn around and face like what is happening in your life while you're like swimming in this river. And we like both went through this meditation and after the meditation, we like woke up and we were like both on the floor. We we're like, what the heck happened? And in this meditation, I actually, there was kind of like two different sides. There was definitely this, these like darker entities that were like under the water and they were trying to pull me down and like, God, if anything, kind of pulled me back up and was like, you can't focus on these negative energies that are around you. You can't focus on these things, but these are real. And you need to be really careful where you're directing your attention to and who and what you're working with. And so that was just kind of a dawning moment of like, okay, there's clearly something more going on here in this world. And like, I need to figure out what that is. And I need to figure out how to like work with this more. <laughs> Wow. So that happened during a meditation. You're at yeah. 15. What's really interesting about that is I would have been 13 around. And it, the first defining moment for, that I had was with a Ouija board. 
and I was at a like a grade eight, like a before high school type thing party. It was a birthday, and some girl had brought this Ouija board in, and they were all playing with it. And uh, I was in the other room, and I felt, I felt not good about it. I it didn't make any sense to me. It just didn't feel mm-hmm. good. It felt like yeah off and so i wouldn't participate now what started happening is i started moving into the room and whatever they were doing started aggravating all the other kids like they were getting mad that i was coming in the room and i was kind of like playing with this because i'd go in the room and they'd be like get out and i and i was always a liked kid so i was like what is going on everyone's getting angry and that the reason i'm bringing that up is it was the first time that i came across energy I understood energy Mm -hmm. works in such an interesting way because these friends of mine all of a sudden were turning. They were turning on me because I believe, I don't know why, maybe my energy was a little too light at the time and the person they were bringing in, it was (laughs) a pretty negative experience and it ended up getting really bad, but we won't, I'll save that for another episode. But yours was around that same age. So I think around, I think that age group, like 13 to 16 or so, you start to get kind of like interest in what are we doing? Like what, what are we doing? Yeah. Right. Well, I think as kids, we're, all, we're a lot more prone to energy. We're a lot more prone to these frequencies and like open to this. However, as we go through life, we start listening to the stories that society has put on us, that adults have put on us of, we have to go to work. We have to have a sensible job. Energy doesn't exist because it's too unpredictable and it's not logical and so we start putting these stories on us and we start closing off that frequency we start closing off that energy field and just pretending it doesn't there it isn't there but really that's all just a perception and a story that we're telling ourselves. did you have that kind of influence around you growing up you know i always ask that because some people are spiritual had like spiritual background or some of them it's completely the other way i'm curious do you, do you mind mentioning that was it yeah with that no I I definitely didn't grow up with that because like I said the church that I was in it was like you go to church from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset it believed in a lot of the Old Testament holy days and even though they believed in God and they believed in these miracles from God they didn't necessarily believe in the supernatural anymore so if I had told anyone that I was seeing stuff and hearing stuff Uh, they would have put me in an insane asylum. Like they would have thought I was crazy. They would have thought I was demon possessed. And so it was kind of a lot of trying to figure out where I belonged in this world and like even hiding who I was so that I could fit in and not being able to embrace it to my fullest potential and, and trying to figure out who God was with all of this. That was, that's, that's the interesting thing about leading me to the Jesus encounter I had Because by that point, even when I was 15, even though I believed in positive and negative spirits and knew there was something good, there was something light, um, that there was something dark now, obviously, uh, I didn't necessarily believe in God because if God was lumped in with none of the supernatural occurring, but I was experiencing the supernatural, then God couldn't exist. So yeah, it was was a lot of figuring out and experimenting on my own. Okay. So yeah, so I can kind of get the idea. So you were in a typical kind of religious faith and Mm -hmm. you had these other things happening and you didn't want it to, you didn't want to look like you were crazy by mentioning it. So you probably kept it to yourself and you're going through that. So, well, let's, let's lead up just so we can, because this will give us some um, talking points, but just leading up to this encounter you had, can you explain what was going on? Like what was going on in your life at that time and how, how that started i guess what kind of happened was i was dealing with it all on my own for quite a while and so as i got into my later teenage years i started realizing like i can't function like this it like the spiritual encounters were getting too crazy i had no one i could talk about and so i really just had to like block a lot of it out and i couldn't you know talk about any of it and i was just like I'm afraid to go outside at night and like it wasn't it wasn't a healthy situation so I was like no I'm done with this like I actually made a very loud proclamation I was like no if this is like what it's like to be in the world and to be spiritual like I don't want any part of this and it needs to all go away and so I actually blocked a lot of it out until I was in my 20s 
And then I started, I'd had my daughter, I had had my son. I started kind of experiencing a little bit of, of spiritual stuff happening in my life again. And I ended up meeting um, a Reiki master. And um, she was an amazing older woman. She's no longer with us. And I was like, hey, I need to start, now that I have a mentor available, I need to start looking at this again. I need to start opening up to these possibilities again. Because even when I was a kid, I had crazy healing abilities. Like my mom would have a headache and I could put my hands on her ears and her like headache would go away. Wow. Um, so I always like did this naturally, but I never knew what it was. I never knew that it was this, it was Reiki or whatever you want to call it. So I started going back into this world and I started going into like the whole new age movement and started opening up into that. I became an energy healer. Um, I practiced shamanism. I got trained in that and worked with all these things, but I still never really knew who to like. I was just operated under love and light, which I ended up finding out was it's a crazy great deception. And um, yeah, so I started exploring into that world, but I still felt like I said I didn't have a sense of direction. I didn't really know like who I was. I didn't have any self-worth still. And I always felt like I still somewhat had to hide it, but was like battling these two sides of myself. And uh, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. So you, so you were getting involved in the spiritual work. You were understanding mm -hmm. how it works. You were getting involved in the spiritual community yeah. um, as things were really progressing. And I can actually remember these times as you're mentioning it, just, growing up myself i don't think we're probably i don't know our ages but we're probably not too far off so i can remember there being changes and everybody would say love and light or and it, and it started getting into this like i don't know i i don't want to go too down that rabbit hole but yeah. i know i know what you mean by that because just like mm -hmm. anything just like in religion there's good and bad there's positive and negative and it can get really tricky the um, yeah the balancing between it so i totally understand that so you're still kind of lost at this point, but you are at least working in, not right now, but in that, in your early twenties, yeah. you're still kind of lost and you're working in Reiki and learning from. Medical. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I was doing all of that. I was really struggling with some like abusive relationships. I was struggling with addiction to like deal with the trauma that I had had and uh, was just trying to figure it all out. And then we jumped forward until when I was, how old am I? I probably would have been about 27, 28. And I had a friend who was going to a church. And at this point I had two kids and they had no idea who God was. They kind of knew about Reiki. I was incorporating them into the energy side of things, but I had really kept God out of the equation. And as I was going to church, I was very much like, I kind of had this try me attitude like this stuff isn't real this is what i'm operating in i'm just simply here so my kids can have this knowledge um so that way they can choose for themselves whether it's right or wrong but clearly you guys are wrong uh, mm. um but then you know and there was that huge judgment piece that's where it was all coming from it was all coming out of judgment and judgment even against myself and what i had experienced and so then we had there was this one weekend uh, that we went to church and I had actually like used my little pendulum to ask if there's this like manifesting workshop I should go to, or there was this like weekend workshop with the church. And so I used my little pendulum and was like, okay, like which one do I need to go to? And I said, I should go to the church weekend. So I was like, okay, well that's, that's weird, but like, <laughs> let's, let's go check this out. Right. Right. <laughs> and so I had this moment, um, the pastor's talking, it states in the Bible that in order for God to forgive you, you can't um, be holding, you know, and you, you, who do you need to forgive in order for God to forgive you? He can't forgive you if you're holding judgments against anyone else. So I was like, okay, this is, this is a good question. Like, who do I need to forgive? And I had this moment where I realized, like, it just kind of came to me like a voice. I needed to forgive myself for all of these judgments that I had. And then all of a sudden I had, it was almost like an out of body experience, like everything else faded around me. And I had this crazy vision of Jesus standing in front of me and he was holding this unlit lantern. And he was like, I have been trying to help you your entire life. Um, and I saw all these experience times in my life when I should have died. I'd become a very rebellious teenager. I like walked through alleyways at night in big cities and stuff like that. And, you know, 
doing drugs and all this kind of stuff, overdoses. And he showed me all of these situations, all these moments in my life when it could have been way worse, but it wasn't because he was protecting me. He was like, I haven't been able to fully protect you because you haven't asked for my help. And I was like, <laughs> if anything, the biggest thing I got out of this was I was like, what the hell? Like, is Jesus actually real? Is God actually real? Like, what is this? I was like, no, I just imagined this in my mind. Like, I'd kind of come back to and I was sitting there at the table and I was kind of like rocking back and forth. I was like, what just happened? Wow. And this lady ended up coming over and like tapping me on the shoulder. And she was like, hey, I had this, I was sitting across the room from you. Something made me look look over at you and I saw an angel standing over you and I was told I had to come and tell you. <laughs> oh, wow. It's making the hair <laughs> like, on my arms go up. <laughs> right? I was like, yeah. okay, clearly I didn't just make this up. Clearly this wasn't just in my head. Like what is happening? So after that's after that, I was like, hey, I need to figure out what's actually in the Bible. Like here I am practicing Reiki. I'm doing all these things, but like the church says you're not allowed to do those things. So like where where do where do I sit in all of this? How is this all real with God being real? And that's when I really started diving into the Bible. I started, you know, asking questions. Um, I took a ton of Bible courses and I realized that there was so much spiritual, supernatural wisdom in the Bible that the church often hides from us. And that can be a whole other conversation. Mm. But the biggest thing that I came down to out of all of this was before when I was doing energy healing, I was doing Reiki and I was doing all these things, I still didn't have a sense of purpose. I still didn't have a sense of self-worth. And that, you know, I ended up finding through this experience and through my connection with God was the biggest piece that he gave me was he gave me that sense of direction. He gave me that self-worth. He gave me that self-love and, you know, he gave me that connection that we're all seeking as human beings. Wow. Okay. I'm going to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, thanks for sharing your experience with that experience. That's incredible. Um, I always thank people and um, I feel like I'm going to get, people annoyed at me for always thanking people. But the thing is, this is like personal, this stuff's personal to people. Yeah. Right. I mean, I've talked to people who are in their like seventies who held on to an experience that happened when they were 12 because it mm -hmm. is so personal to them and they never had said anything before, like those types of situations, right? Like this stuff happens. Now you're already in the work, you're already in the world of it. And so sharing your experience is part of it. So I think it's, it's great that you're doing that. So thank you. Yes. And so this gets, this is going to be a really interesting conversation. And, and I, and I'm, because I haven't really, I've talked to people who have more of a religious backing with their NDEs and then other people have had uh, spiritual mm -hmm. backings and they kind of relate to one another at times when I'm noticing when they're telling me about their experiences. But in one, for instance, it'll say, well, I met Jesus. And the other one, it'll be, oh, I met this being. And But they are the same mm -hmm. kind of feeling. Now, I'm not saying the being and Jesus are the same. So please, audience, don't yell at me for saying that. Um, but <laughs> but I, I, I question it. I don't know the answers to that, right? I mean, I'm questioning everything. Mm -hmm. So, But what I would say is how – so the first thing, and this is something I would ask anybody who had a near-death experience, when you had that moment, and you went to this church, you did your pendulum thing. It said, go to the church experience instead. And you're thinking, okay, I really wanted to go to this other one, but I'll go to this instead, I guess. <laughs> and then you have this experience and then you come out of that. Um, now, I just want to, you know, preface it and ask, you weren't on anything at that time. You weren't. No, no, no. I was completely, I had been completely sober for like almost two years by that point. Yeah. I, I so. asked that too, because people have like yeah. ayahuasca experiences as well and things like that. And they, you know, I'm just making, I'm seeing you were completely yeah. sober that day. You yeah. showed up totally uh, in your normal state. Okay. And you had this experience. How real did it feel in comparison to this? You and I right now. I would say it very real. Like I've, had a lot of meditations and I've had a lot of, you know, experiences and stuff like that, but it wasn't like, you kind of like know that it's this, like it's, it's different in a way. You kind of know it's almost more like a dream state. Right. Whereas this 
was like, no, like something had definitely happened here. <laughs> right. And it felt, um, did it, is it because it actually affected you in such a, yeah. like a knowingness way? Like I've, I've been almost like, um, it didn't feel like, okay. I'm I'm jumping all over the place, but I'm trying to always talk for my audience and hopefully I'm asking the right questions. The way that it des you describe it is you were, uh, you were in this uh, space in this event and were you meditating at the time or was it just, no, so it I was just, just happened. literally, I was just sitting there and I had asked myself like, who do I need to forgive? Oh, I need to forgive myself. And then like, it's as if the world just like fell away and I saw something else. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it, it was just spontaneous. It wasn't. Yeah. Um, okay. The way that you spoke of Jesus and the way that he was saying the things he was saying, and I do believe in exit points too. So you probably did have quite a few exit points by the sounds of it. Yeah. I was a little bit rebellious in my younger years too. So I get it, but it doesn't sound as much as yours, but um, there's exit points for sure. And it almost, I don't want to say it sounded as if Jesus was being, um, authoritative but would mm -hmm. you have felt that way like is that oh yeah he was he was definitely teaching me a lesson but in a loving way he was like okay you need you need to like get your, you need to get your stuff together here right like, right so it was a, yeah. it was authoritative but it felt loving it didn't feel yeah. mean or or negative or anything like yeah, that it was no. almost like a father or mother or a parental figure exactly. looking after you yeah kind of feeling okay mm -hmm. Okay. That, that was what I wanted to kind of just make clear. So, okay. So this happens, you're told basically you need to kind of, you need to get in touch with who you are. That's yeah. the feeling I was getting. He said, and... yeah, I needed, I think the biggest thing was I needed to start looking to something like other than just love and light. Like I needed to start actually connecting back with God himself was like the biggest thing. And, you know, that God was there and God loved me, yeah. but I wasn't even listening. It's kind of like when we're a rebellious teen, you know, we're a rebellious teenager and we're doing all the things. And we're like, I know what is right. I know like how to do things. And our parent is there like literally like, hey, like you're an idiot. Let me help you because mm -hmm. I'm older than you are. I know better than you. Like I can see things that you're not seeing. And that's pretty much how I was going about in the world. And so, as you said, you know, God came in in this very real father way and was like, hey, stop. Like, let me let me show you this. Let me help you. Yeah. So, yeah. And there's there's so much to unpack with this. And I'm sitting here thinking, yeah. wow, I'm usually really good at guiding this. And I'm thinking, OK, there's 12 directions I want to go. And <laughs> And because, because here's the thing, my, I'm sure, uh, my, our, this audience at soul inspired is going to be full of, uh, people who are very spiritual, full of people who are mm -hmm. very religious. It'll be all over the place. So first of all, hi, everybody. Um, the second thing hi. I'm going <laughs> to, the second thing I'm going to say though, is somewhere along the lines we as humans pick a path, you know, whether it's going really religious, really spiritual, a combination of both, we kind of are trying to find ourselves. And I think everyone should have that right. Mm -hmm. Um, Along the lines somewhere, I just know this from, you know, that there's people likely in the spiritual community who have a negative outlook on religion and vice versa, mm -hmm. the religious community have a negative outlook on some spirituality or spiritual uh, things. Yeah. If we touch on the area of the spiritual world having a bit of a negative ideology of religion. I wanted to, I have my own beliefs on this, but really this is about having you on and you're the guest. And I wanted to know, why do you feel that has happened? Like, what do you think has happened and why we're at this point where people are questioning the church or religion is that a little too far deep to get into or i just want no to no actually i i think it's a very important question and it's definitely one of the things i've started kind of making one of my sidelines of work is i think we do need to start questioning religion and we need to start questioning the church i think that's very important but we need to do it in a loving way and without excluding god from it so i think the church 
I'm going to try not to get too into one side here, but I believe that a lot of what has occurred in history in church, because there has been a lot of persecution, is man's own interpretation and man's own perception of things. And there has been a lot of control that has come from the church and the church can't really control us if we are supernatural beings tapped into our energy tapped into our power we're going to be a lot harder to control and so then they can't have as many rules they can't you know have their own agenda and so they push a way of viewing god without it being so supernatural and I think we really need to start bringing the supernatural back into God. Like all that God did in the Bible was supernatural. He parted the Red Sea. He like did all the, you know, he resurrected people from the dead. He did all these crazy things. You can't really look at God without being supernatural. And, but the fact is, on the other hand, so you have this church who's, you know, leading this non-supernatural agenda and you have these people who believe in it. But that doesn't mean that God's not supernatural and we really need to And I guess what I'm getting at is the fact that there are really loving people who are in the church and then you have your judgmental people in the church and at the end of the day, it all comes down to how we ourselves are perceiving it and we just really need to like tap into love and forgiveness for these people for believing the stories that they've been told. And just start asking, like, is there another way? Um, can I believe in God? And can I believe in supernatural? And how can I combine the two? Right. It doesn't have to be either or. And like your fellow neighbor isn't the enemy. Right. And I, I and just to piggyback off that, I, I think that it's also safe to say that, you know, you can be a spiritual person, you can be a person of faith, but you don't, you know, you, you likely don't necessarily have to live at the church, you know, like it's exactly. not like you can go both. It's where do you, where do you feel welcomed? And if you have mm -hmm. that thing in your life, that is your faith, your God, whatever it might be. And uh, then that's, what's important. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think like tapping into your truth, like asking some of those hard questions, like, okay, you know, should, even myself, like I don't, you know, I believe very strongly in God and Jesus Christ, but I don't necessarily go to church every week. I have my own relationship with God. And so I'll ask him like, should I go to church this week or is there something else I should do? And, you know, just really trusting where he wants to be and developing my own personal relationship with him. And I think that's something we, whether you are supernatural or whether you are, or, you know, a follower of Christ, just asking like, what church should I go to? You know, how should I approach these situations and not condemning someone else because they're not following your path? Right, right. No, absolutely. I love that. And to love. Exactly. <laughs> to That's love what we're all supposed to do. <laughs> exactly. To love one another. And yeah. um, I think really what it comes down to is going within. I think that was the message you got yeah. From your experience meeting Jesus was to to work on yourself, to go within. Um, that's why, you know, no one's here telling anyone what to do. We're, no one's here. And, you know, I always put a disclaimer at the beginning of these episodes because I'm not even giving opinions. I'm just saying what's coming yeah. out. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I don't want anyone to ever feel like someone is telling them how to live their life. But mm -hmm. go within and you'll know. Just listen to yourself exactly um yeah right that's what the, that's what it is you know that's, that's exactly what it is and that's why like even with the coaching and the work i do with my clients like i'm not telling them you have to believe in god in order to work with me i'm telling them hey what are you telling yourself and why are you telling yourself this and let's shift that narrative so that way you can start believing in yourself and really start tapping into your authentic purpose so really, it's all about that work and unraveling all of these stories that you have told yourself of why you can or can't do anything, whether that's spiritual or physical. It all comes down to the stories that you have told yourself. Did this experience change your outlook on who we are? Like, did it did it change you? Did it sounds like you already had a very strong spiritual like belief system that you were going through. But again, with 
with faults, right? Because you were confused yeah. and had a lot of things going on. Did it, did this experience, did you have that experience in say, oh, wow, things are going to change? Like, was there a moment there that you just were like, what just happened? And that was different than anything I've ever experienced. Yeah, it definitely, it put me back kind of in the driver's seat because I was like, okay, a lot of these situations and a lot of my self-worth and my, the doubts in my own self are occurring because of my own infliction, because I've been doing this to myself because of, I've told myself the story that God isn't real because of how others have treated me. I've told myself, you know, that I'm not worthy, all of these different things, but ultimately all comes down to I have done this to myself and I now have the choice to choose different. And so it really allowed me to kind of like cut through all of the BS and look at who I was and what was I, what, what was I doing to myself? Right. Here's a curious question. Cause I ask all my NDE mm -hmm. people this, but I'm going to ask you this too. And it's yeah. really just based off the experience you had. Um, so it may not relate, but if I were to just simply ask you, are you afraid of death? What comes to you? No, I'm definitely no. not afraid of death. No, I believe that when we die, we like, we're going to go no matter what, like, honestly, because obviously I wasn't supposed to die back then because I still had a purpose and a mission in this life. And I still had things I had to learn and accomplish. Mm -hmm. And so I think whether you are crossing the street or you are, you know, jumping out of a plane, if it's your time to go, you're going to go no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not afraid of that. I'd say I'm afraid of pain. Yeah, <laughs> I'm afraid yeah. death is painful. Yeah. Um, but the general idea of death, no, I'm not afraid of it. Right. So your true, your belief system, the experiences you've encountered give you insight that we are more than what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Right. And in yeah. speaking, and in speaking of that, you have had some spirit ghostly experience as well. Would you be able to share anything on that? Yeah. So I had an interesting, um, so I do like energy clearings and that sort of thing. Like as we've touched on, I do believe that there are positive and negative uh, spiritual beings, um, ghosts, angels, like, I don't know, a lot of, <laughs> there's so much in there in the world of ghosts. And so I love to do energy clearings and most of them I've done um, in person, but I was working with a coaching client and she was mentioning that the shop where her husband was working at um, was possessed and that there was these strange occurrences that were happening. Things were moving without like being put in different locations without explanation. Some chair had randomly started on fire for no reason. Like this place was haunted. Wow. And so I was like, okay, well, I could try doing a distance energy clearing on this. Um, so it actually took me a while. It was, it was very interesting. It took me like almost a week to get to this energy clearing. Cause every time I went to go sit down, something was coming up that was like distracting me or just like pushing me away from doing this. Finally, I was like, no, like I'm in control here. And like, we're going to go in and figure out what is happening. Mm. And so I sat down in a session, um, to connect with whatever was causing this haunting and I ended up connecting with this woman and something God, God told, I always work very closely with God in all of these situations. God was like, Hey, just, just listen to her story before you just like cast her out with Sage. I was like, okay, this <laughs> okay. Is, <laughs> right. I was like, okay, this is interesting. I've never, like, this was the weirdest energy clearing session I've ever done. Okay. That's what I want to like preface this with. It wasn't like anything I've ever done before. So I had, um, sorry, confronted this woman and I was like, Hey, what has happened? Why are you here? And she told me that she um, had been in a very abusive relationship with her husband. Um, and that he had basically ended up killing her. And so she like hated men. And that's why she was haunting this like shop that was full of men. And she was like mad at them. And I was like, okay, well, like, why can't you just move on? And she was like, well, I'm afraid because of what has happened to me and what I've done that I'm going to go to hell. Mm. So I can't move on. I'm just going to stay here and haunt these people. Right. Okay. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Okay. 
So like I could have just come in here with some sage and like holy vibes and be like, get the hell out. And here I would have been like inflicting more trauma and more harm, right? So God told me, okay, just like take her hand. Like I want her to know that like she is loved as well. And like, this is not the common situation that she's been raised of heaven and hell. This is not what's happening. So I like felt like I energetically took her hand and I felt like God holding my hand, the other hand, holding my other hand. And we like passed these loving vibes to her and she just like faded off into light. And I was like, okay, this was a very weird, this was another one of the like really crazy moments where I was like, okay, that was, that was really weird. Like, but I feel like something's happened. And so I messaged her actually I didn't even message her at, like I told her I was doing the session but I was like we're gonna just wait for a bit to like see what happens see if this actually did something or if this is just my mind coming up with things right so I messaged her like two weeks later and was like hey have you guys noticed anything happening at the shop and she was like no everything all the supernatural experiences that have occurred have completely stopped and they've still stopped to this day wow. so <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. And you, so you did that, you did that remotely. You weren't there in person. I did that remotely. Yeah. You did mm-hmm. that remotely. Do you, yeah. when that happens, that's, that's unbelievable. When, when you have that, do you sense them, see them, hear them, feel them? Like, what is that? Fe- what does that feel like to the person listening in? And questioning? Yeah, it's, I do sometimes get like goosebumps and that sort of thing, but I also kind of just get this like deep knowing, mm-hmm. um, just kind of this like deep sense of what has happened. Sometimes I'll see images um, in my mind so I could kind of like see her without like, it's not like I was seeing you on camera, but I can like know that there's a woman there and I'm kind of like picking up these stories that she's telling me and it's like almost a voice in my head that's not my own mind. Right. So there's, there's the, a few different senses happening. Yeah. Like I, I mean, doing this uh, podcast, I've really met a lot of interesting people at this point in learning about all the Claire's right. And feeling mm-hmm. like I understand some of that myself, but still coming to terms with all that myself. Um, so even the knowing one was a new one for me. I forget what they call it. Claire cognizant, I believe is the word. I believe so. Yeah. And yeah. so that's what it sounds like. Your, you experience is that there's like a knowingness that you just can't, mm-hmm. you know, you can't brush away. Just can't, you can't ignore it. It's not even like, you know, there's the knowing when you're like, you know, making, a choice like a choice in life where you're like okay should I pick a or b and you're like yeah pick b because you're like rationing it it's also just this like deep in your soul knowing of like I don't even know how I know this and I'd say that's but I know that this is like something right and uh, yeah I'd say that's that's the biggest that's the strongest one for me wow so you Mm -hmm. and so you've had you do this kind of work and that was one of your more intense ones that you can remember where it was just immediate and you were yeah and I'd say that was the biggest different like that one was really different for me because like this woman like a lot of times they are these like spiritual entities who just like aren't supposed to be there and this one actually really brought a huge perspective shift for myself of like wondering you know why are these beings there like what beliefs and stories have these you know ghosts been told that's influencing or like scaring them even after death and you know really wanting to walk with love and compassion for some of these situations and with these spiritual beings rather than just you know passing your own judgment of what other people have said they should a lot of a lot of people may be thinking how do you know you're dealing with spirit? You know, if, if, if you've not physically seen them, because we're used to mm-hmm. physical eyes, right? The physical thing, I'm looking at you right now. So I know yeah. you're here with me. How do you know for sure that you're dealing with energy? I mean, I'm asking this question just to be someone asking the question. I think I yeah. understand it, but even me, like I don't, I've had one spiritual experience I haven't really talked about um, that was through sight. Um, Mm -hmm. But some people see things all the time and other people see see nothing. And yet they, they're, they're, they're sure of it. So how, how did you come to the conclusion 
I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, I or, is it, or is it is it still something you're questioning? Like, are you still saying maybe? maybe no. Uh, you know, I'm just wondering where your mind comes up. I think I've, I've just had these occurrences so often that I know without a shred of a doubt that something is happening out there mm -hmm. beyond this physical realm. Like there's been too many unexplainable situations in my life that and parallels that's not even, you know, of my own doing right of people affirming these experiences like the woman tapping me on the shoulder and saying like hey i saw something too right or in this case where like this woman actually there was something happening i had a spiritual experience with this you know ghost and then that those things that were happening stopped happening right. and so there's been too often this element of something about beyond myself you know, some sort of physical affirmation occurring to prove that this has truly happened mm -hmm. uh, for me, you know, to not believe in it. I can, I can completely agree. I have the same thing with numerology and numbers and the interesting thing, someday I'd like to get a numerologist on here. Um, someone in the spiritual realm that deals with numbers and things like that. But the reason I ask these questions, right. Is because, you know, I'm not here to try to convince anyone about anything. Um, but the questions that do come up often are things like what I just said. And it's like, how yeah. do we really know? Well, the thing is, is it's everyone's own experience. That's, that's the real interesting part of this whole journey in life is that your experience is different than mine. The skeptics experience yes. is different than yours. And until that person mm -hmm. experiences something, they may not know. Right. And maybe they're exactly. not supposed to, maybe, maybe we're all on this exact blueprint of where we're going i do believe in free will but i think there is kind of a destination of what we're supposed to be doing so yeah. that's really fascinating stuff so so you've yeah. always just and had connection to that yeah I've, yeah i've always just had connection with that and i'd say one of the other things too is i've often questioned it like it's not like i'm going along like i have these crazy spiritual experiences and well i am you know i am now but i mean like when i have an experience i try to figure it out. I'm like, Hey, what happened? What does this mean? Was this actually real? Or was I like overtired and delusional? And so like, I ask these questions to myself too. And you right. know, it still always comes back to it being true, right? Our brain loves logic. That's the thing. Yes. Our brain loves to logic. It loves to rationalize. But you know, the fact is how much are you missing on because you're living by logic? Like how much greater can life be if you can start to like embrace some of this magic? As and kids, we, know we believe it. in magic. Like We need to stop not believing in magic. <laughs> and we know it too, because when you're living in that vibe, when you're going in that direction, yeah. you feel different. Your energy feels different. Exactly. You wake up happy. And things things just and magically manifest. happen for you. That's like manifestation. Synchronicity. Yeah. yeah. We, were, exactly. we were just saying yeah. the same thing. There you go. So I was saying manifestation. <laughs> you're saying synchronicity. That should prove it right there. We're both in the same energy yeah. plane there. So yeah, exactly. it is really interesting. Um. So, okay. So in the work that you do, you work with your coach, your coach, you have clients that you yeah. work with in the spiritual kind of realm of things. Yeah. So I'm a mindset coach and an energy healer. So I would say I work in the spiritual realm, but the biggest thing is I help high impact women who's, who pretty much like their business is thriving, but inside they feel like they're dying. They have lived, listened to all these stories about how hard they need to work, how much they share, and they are neglecting themselves. So I help them figure out what are those stories that they are telling themselves and how can they put all of themselves back into the equation so they can have their cake and eat it too. So that life can be fun. It can be loving. They can be in that vibe. They can, you know, be spending time with their kins and have a thriving business. It's not one or the other. And so I do that through a mix of energy work and then also mindset coaching to help reprogram their brain, create those new healthy habits and really, you know, step into that flow of life as it's meant to be. I love that. And you lived that you were, you yeah, were the, exactly. the same in the sense you were doing the same thing where you had, you knew mm -hmm. who you were at your core. You knew the things you wanted to be doing. You were doing those things, but there was something still missing. And so yeah. it sounds like that's, and now your work is to help people kind of find and 
find those missing pieces. So that's great. Exactly. Where, where do people find you? Like, how do people get in contact with you? So um, I am on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. So my Instagram is i.mladon and my Facebook is i.mladon. Um, you can also message me at hello at i.mladon.com. Um, and uh, yeah, you can reach out, have a, have a conversation and uh, I look forward to connecting with more people. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and then I have different like group uh, coaching programs that come out regularly as well. Perfect. So you said, you said it was i.mladon? Yes. Yeah. For Instagram. For Instagram. Sadly, I am Eladon was taken. <laughs> <laughs> okay i had that i had the same thing as joe broski the musician somebody had taken him like there's no other joe broski around what's going on like i felt like somebody like right? stole stole my name for something that was yeah bad. and I, i'll get all that in so anybody that wants to contact you they can look into the um the end notes of the of the podcast episode and find you and and do those types of things i i always kind of get near the end of the episode, but I, I ask a specific question to everybody. And I really like you to just feel what comes from your heart right away. Yeah. And, um, the question is, why are we here? Mm, I love that question. I honestly believe that we are here as human beings to be able to learn, to go through all of these human emotions, to experience greed, jealousy, you know, envy, all of those different experiences that we experience as a human and to learn how to cut through those and love no matter what. Oh, wow. And I love your answer. <laughs> learn, learn to cut through the human experience or emotions. Yeah. And um, just love. And learn to love from that. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, it's like I always say, like I get different answers and I love all of them, but some I've had mm -hmm. somebody just say to love like that is yeah. it's and and I love that too um but you you took that and you kind of went a little deeper with it and to come yeah. to human emotion and experience because really ultimately it's being human that causes some of the issues we've talked about today the ego gets a mm -hmm. hold of us the mind the brain wants logic it wants understanding yeah. and proof it doesn't want to go based off of even what we feel. And I think feeling overthinking can sometimes really help us mm -hmm. because the feel seems to be more connected to yeah, like the heart center, the feel. But sometimes we need to ground our feelings and logic, right? That's so true too. That's we, true really, too. we really need to learn to work with all of it together. So yeah. And not be controlled by one or the other. Yeah. Cause we can lift off and then we're just kind of floating around and not being grounded at all. And I, and that's, right? that comes down to the work that you do. So <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Your heart um, says you want that abusive relationship, but like, really, you don't need that abusive relationship. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So, so, so don't listen to me, everybody. Listen to Ella. Um, I, I was going down a good route with that, but then you're right. If you go too heart, but you want that yeah. balance. I think the balance mm -hmm. of both is very important. Exactly. Just like the balance in your face. Mm -hmm. So um, thanks yeah. for being on the the episode today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is a lot of fun. I, I generally turn to the camera and say thanks to all the subscribers and the audience. Um, we had an influx of subscribers recently. So thank you so much for following along. Please like, share, and subscribe and share Ella's message and um, I appreciate everybody being on with us today. So thanks again, Ella, for coming on. Yes, thank you. And thank you guys for listening. So